Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this webinar on Spatial Engineering, a new program of the University of Twente. In this webinar, I will uh, introduce you to the presenters. I will tell you a bit more about our faculty ITC and its international atmosphere. We will look at global challenges and wicked problems. And then I will go more in depth about what our program is all about. And I let our students tell for themselves uh, their experiences during the program. Finally, we will look at uh, internships and job uh, perspectives. And uh, I hope that you stay uh, online for a chat session to answer all your questions. First things first, let me introduce you to the presenters of today. We have Helen Serere, Kasper van het Loo and Anna Mossink, who are three of our students from Spatial Engineering. And I am Victor Jetten. I am the program director, and I'm also a professor in natural hazards and disaster risk management at ITC. My name is Helen Serere and I come from Zimbabwe. My background was surveying and geomatics, which was a very broad course. And uh, the reason why I chose to come to ITC was mainly because of its reputation that precedes it, as well as the fact that it's an international environment, so you get to learn with different people from um, different countries and different cultures. And the reason why I went for spatial engineering is the ability to explore different knowledge areas. Because for instance, you get to learn with people who have done um, civil engineering, you get to meet uh, spatial planners, software developers, and which for me was really good to get to share different knowledge areas. Hello, my name is uh, Anna Mossink. Uh, and um, yeah, before I came here, before I came here to the ITC, I did a Bachelor in Civil Engineering here at the University of Twente. And um, I decided to go for uh, Spatial Engineering last year uh, because of a few factors. Um, it, spatial Engineering got me the opportunity to connect it to my background in Civil Engineering. Um, but I also was very interested in uh, the, the international culture to work with people from different disciplines and to work in a more project group environment where different um, study fields and approaches come together. Uh, my name is Gus van der Loo, I'm from the Netherlands. Um, I have a background in traffic engineering which has the highest relation with spatial planning of the three core areas of spatial engineering. And spatial engineering is the perfect master for me because of two reasons. First of all, uh, the, the master is content-wise very special because you do project-based learning. And secondly, because of the unique environment. Here in ITC, you also learn things that are normally not teached in a master, uh, but because of the many nationalities here at ITC and all kinds of backgrounds from people, you also learn other things about cultures, countries, and different working styles. What is ITC all about? We are quite a special faculty because we are extremely international. From all over the world, students come to ITC for their masters, which gives a very multicultural environment. So in any one year, you will encounter probably over 30 nationalities. You will work and live with them. You will exchange all your experiences. And I can tell you, it's an extremely inspiring environment. To show a bit more why people are coming and their motivation, we have a little movie here of a student, uh, Mercy from Kenya, who shows you around. Hi, I'm Mercy. I'm from Kenya and I study Joint Information Science at the University of Twente. Welcome to ITC. I'll show you around. My touch is to use environmental modeling to analyze and predict processes that occur in the environment. I decided to study Joint Information Science because my background is in ecology and I needed skills in Joint Information Science to apply in my field. Obtaining knowledge on geoinformation science will be helpful. Kenya is known for its great wildlife and economic development that's happening. So learning these skills will assist us in conserving these areas for future generations. We understand how GIS works, geoinformation science works, and we try to use it to solve real life problems. We also try to we undertake research in environmental modeling and management and we do a lot of practicals. By measuring the diameter of the tree, we can predict how much carbon is stored in the forest. 112. Yeah, field work is fun. You know, you get to um, uh, get time off to do a lot of 
scientific research and also walk that's part of exercise 21 so that's 20 for my msc thesis i'll be studying how european mistletoe affects scots pine forest in france this is iris my supervisor for my msc research i'll study trees because trees are important uh, for life and because i love nature I love the quietness of nature. I love wildlife. I chose to study at University of Twente because it's a world-class university and with students from all over the world. Iran, Nepal, Kenya, very multicultural. Uh, what I love about the Netherlands is the people. They are more outgoing and fun-loving. Do you want to become a specialist in geoinformation science and earth observation? Visit itc.nl for more information. The international context of ITC means that we are also dealing with very, the very large and complex problems in the world. You can think of disaster risk management, of food security, water security, rapid urbanization, climate change, health issues, energy transition, there are many, many things that we study. You can also understand that these problems are very complex. And the complexity is part of our study spatial engineering. The way to look at complex problems is, is with a diagram of wickedness. You see here four quadrants. On the vertical axis, you see the degree of knowledge we have on a problem. So we, we know a lot or we don't know a lot. And on the horizontal axis, you see that there are many stakeholder groups, but they may agree or disagree. And this leads to a level of wickedness. In the bottom right corner, you have absolute chaos because nobody agrees with each other and we don't know what's going on. You can think of some very complex disaster that has never happened before and it paralyzes a bit. We really don't know how to act. The way to get out of there is actually to have some inspiration or to decide that whatever happens, we will move to forward and we need some consensus. So step three on the bottom left is often that there is a consensus to act. And still not knowing exactly what's going on, but we see we want to do something. The strange thing is now that if you increase the level of knowledge and you go to quadrant two, that often creates more disagreement because people make informed decisions and they often start disagreeing with each other on what should be done. However, if we can get out of that, if we can reach an agreement, we go to quadrant one, which is no more than a technical, the, the problem is now a technical problem, and we need a plan, a design, a budget to solve it. So the wickedness is the way we look at problems, and the way we solve them, we have found out in all our work in, uh, in many countries in the world, that you always need three types of information, three types of knowledge. There is the technical side, so the technical engineering, or maybe geoengineering, environmental sciences, hydrology, that's one part. The other part is knowledge on how we behave ourselves and how we have organized ourselves, so that's planning and governance. And what you also need to know is you have to have information and data to feed these other knowledge areas. And often in the world, there's not much data on the ground, so we resort to satellite images and geoinformation data because that exists everywhere. And in this study, you will learn about all three of these uh, knowledge fields in equal measure. Because we think you need to know all three to, to work towards a solution. Let me give you some examples of these three areas, so you have some idea. An example about technical engineering. This is a flood model. It's a complex uh, flood situation in a city. And we will teach you all the background of this, the physical background of this model, but also what kind of data do you, do you need to run it? What are its results? How can I translate these results so it becomes useful for stakeholders? You will also learn to do stakeholder analysis. So it is really social sciences and governance. Uh, you will learn how to analyze governance structures. You will learn how to recognize what responsibilities and roles people have in such a problem. And finally, you will deal with all kinds of uh, different sources of geoinformation, maybe from high resolution satellite images, such as this example, where you take a, a satellite image from a city and you derive from it a housing footprint so that you can use that in, in the analysis. It may also uh, be drone information or, uh, or other sources of data. We think that you do not become a multidisciplinary person when you get, all these, when you get these three knowledge fields in sequence. So we designed uh, a master that is based on project-led education. 
in the first year of your master, you get three very large projects where you work in groups to solve one of these problems. And within that project, you learn. This is how we set it up. The three projects in the first year are set up around some very large themes. The first one is about risk and resilience and climate-proof cities, and the case study is Kampala in Uganda. It's set up in such a way that uh, it, you, it enables you to find solutions against flooding in that complex environment. The second project is about sustainability, food and water security in the Masai Mara uh, region in Kenya. This is more complex because there are more stakeholders involved, uh, more people depending on water and food security, they all compete for the same resource, and there is a much more complex government problem going on. So that already, and, and the scale is also larger. So there you have to struggle a bit more to find proper solutions for this. The third one is a near unsolvable problem. It deals with earthquakes in the Netherlands due to gas extraction, man-induced earthquakes, and there there is a a real governance problem where people start to mistrust each other and where the obvious solutions like uh, stopping with gas extraction will not necessarily work. So it's up to you to find a, a way out of there. To help you find your way in these complex problems in these projects, they are set up in such a way that the first half of the time you get a lot of knowledge from us in mini lectures and tutorials. You have a tutor that guides your group throughout the project and then you have to work together to solve a part of it. Now, I let, uh, I'll, I'll hand you over to our students so that they can explain what they experienced during these projects. Yeah, what I liked about the program and uh, what I learned uh, so far is um, we, in our studies, uh, we covered a lot of different topics. Uh, we covered biodiversity, we covered remote sensing, we covered uh, water, water management and hydrology, and uh, also some governance aspects uh, like stakeholder analysis. And I liked how that comes together and how that, um, how I can in a project, in the projects we do, how we can, um, yeah, collaborate that and use that knowledge from different fields in one project. So for the first case study that we did in um, special engineering was really exciting. We looked at the capital city of Uganda, Kampala, and what we were focusing on was the flooding that happens in Kampala. And like many developing countries and many, just like many cities that you would expect, there is rapid urbanization. And for me, initially, when I was starting the case study, in my head, I had the fact that, okay, maybe uh, flooding should be a combination of um, failure in drainages or, and uh, large rainfall amounts. But looking at the case study in particular, we realized that with um, Kampala, it wasn't just an issue of, fail of drainage failures or an issue that they get so much rainfall because it, it, they don't really get that much rainfall unlike any other city. But it was also effect of um, the, maybe looking at the history of the city that it was built on hills and because of that and the constant urbanization and the economy of the country, there were um, different prices, economic prices of where the people kept moving into the city but could not settle where the land was dry because maybe of financial reasons. And because of that, the economy of the country forced the low class citizens to settle in wetland areas which were used for draining of rainwater. And because of that, the system kind of got disrupted and there are so many floods happening. And different um, um, experts have tried to look at this study. They have tried to implement different interventions in trying to come up with different strategies in solving these problems. And many have not been, had, men, had not been successful at, a, at that time. So it was kind of, we got to explore and look at different aspects of what is it that could that can be done to solve this um, problem? Because it's a very multi-stakeholder problem and different interest groups, and it involves a lot of people and not a very clear solution as to what has to be done. So we got to explore the different use of spatial engineering. Like spatial engineering was a very uh, strong tool in which we could look at technical engineering uh, aspect where we could model the floods, we could come up with catchments, we could see 
like if we get this type of rainfall, how will it appear? And we would also look at the planning aspect where we would evaluate different scenarios to see that if maybe the land here is uh, replaced by something else or if the planning is done in this way, how is that going to help? Or oh, and we would also look at the GIS where we would overlay different structures, different maps and evaluate the different um, aspects that can be involved and uh, like basically use the power of spatial engineering in evaluating a very broad range of possible ideas or interventions. Spatial engineering is for me a master uh, where you learn how to solve problems that uh, seems impossible to solve, the so-called wicked problems. Uh, for example, we uh, had a, the second project is about uh, food and water security in Kenya. Um, I have been to several countries in the Global South before I started this master. And during these times in those countries, I always had many questions. Uh, for example, how can it be that there is still food and water insecurity in this world where we are cap in a world where we are capable of doing amazing things, but we are still not able to feed everyone? Uh, now that I've done the, the second project about food and water security, uh, I started to realize how those problems can occur and what the causes and effects are. Uh, so after uh, this project, I realized how these problems uh, occur and how we as spatial engineers are capable of thinking about certain interventions to solve these kind of problems. So that was a big insight for me. The end of the first year where you choose your electives and the second year is more a specialization phase. There you go more in depth into a direction that you want to follow. The second year is set up as follows. There is first an international excursion with all your classmates uh, where you go in Europe to a number of companies and institutes to see how they are solving wicked problems, so to speak. The majority of that year, the, the most part is, is used for your research phase. So you'll write a research proposal and then do MSc re research in one of our many projects. And it ends with an internship, which is uh, three months where you work uh, with one of the companies or institutes that, are, that, we, that we are connected with. Uh, the second year ends with a three months internship and to help you organize that we have for instance the internship market where we invited companies and institutes to present themselves. So in my study um, we develop a PDP, a personal development plan. And what I like about this personal development plan is that it allows me to describe what I want to learn in my study um, more than just the regular subjects. So what skills from the pro uh, would I apply in a project, like pro project management skills, communication skills, um, and what do I want to learn about, about in the project. Um, but it also allows me to look further than the subject. So how do I use it later on when I'm graduated or when I'm doing my research topic. And that's what I really like about the personal development plan. So at the end of all this, what are your job perspectives? The companies and institutes we are dealing with are really, really want to hire people that have this multidisciplinary outlook. So you can think of something like project managers, risk managers, scientific researchers or consultants in hydrology, sustainable development, natural resource management, disaster risk, food and water security, land management, any of these uh, topics. So what are the entry criteria for spatial engineering? This broad multidisciplinary study means that we don't have a fixed list of bachelor uh, disciplines that we want. We want a certain type of person. You have to be curious. You have to be attracted to this multidisciplinary view. That's very important. And you have to have an interest in solving these broad spatial problems that I just mentioned. What, I, what we want from you is that you have a background or a proven experience in two out of the three knowledge areas. So that can be, for instance, technical, which, which I also include environmental sciences, hydrology, geography. Uh, a second one could be geoinformation sciences. And the third one is governance and planning studies. And you have to have the will and the curiosity to learn about the other one that you don't have. When you are in doubt of this, you, we always look at uh, personal information. So if you send us your CV and your motivation letter, we will look at it and we, we can discuss with you personally whether we think you can enroll or not. 
You can find a lot of information, practical information, on our website of the master's program, Spatial Engineering, with all the details on how to enroll the admission requirements and the documents you need. With being a foreign student um, in a foreign country, there will be a lot of um, different cultures that you have to deal with. And, you know, it was really good when I came here to IETC because at first you'd be, you don't really know how to interact with people from different um, backgrounds, people from different cultures with different personalities and different way of doing things. So the introduction week in particular was really helpful that, you know, ITC gets to offer this introduction week whereby we have um, groups, we do games with people from different backgrounds. We get to talk and um, explain to each other how our cultures are like. So that, it's, and this is very useful in special engineering in particular because the, pro, the, the work that you do is not just limited to you as an individual, but because you have to work in a group environment, you have to really understand how different people um, present their ideas or do their, have their own way, have their own rhythm of doing things. And that really helps in maybe not getting offended at slight things that may be to you a sort of a cultural shock. And it's also good that we get to have uh, cultural um, lectures where we look at different values. And this would also be of great um, help because even when you're looking at a case study, you have to see what do the people value in that. So that even when you're coming up with an intervention, you know that, okay, maybe this cannot work for them because of their different values connected with their way of culture. and. Maybe this might help them or so I think cultural skills for me and being in an intercultural environment and getting the ability to learn the different cultural aspect was very useful. If you're thinking about joining speech engineering, uh, I have two advices for you. First of all, to be an open minded person that is willing to learn from different kind of knowledge fields, different kind of backgrounds of uh, people that are also studying spatial engineering. And secondly, uh, I, sh I want to encourage you not to worry too much about not knowing uh, enough in one of those three core areas. Because uh, in our class, there are also people that didn't know uh, something about a, a specific core area. But during the program, they managed to learn a lot about one of these fields. And so it's really not a problem that uh, you're specialized in one or two fields and you do not know too much about one of the core areas. So when you're looking at enrollment and how it is that you can get the opportunity to come to ITC or specifically enroll into special engineering, my advice would be that you make sure that you start the application procedure really early because you have a lot of deadlines that come ahead. So if you find out that you want, you really want to come, then you have to make sure that you know at an earlier stage, you look up the deadlines, you write them down, you look at all the requirements that are needed, and then you start with your application process. Because for me, at first, I applied really early, and then I realized that there was a certain requirement, which was the English, intercultural English from the embassy, and that, kind of took me a bit of time because that also had to be applied for and you had to wait for the process of getting the, the results back. And that can be quite, um, like it can interfere with the scholarship deadline as well because it's not just a deadline of submitting the application but if you're also looking to acquire funding then you also have to make sure that all the documents are present before the final deadline. For me, it actually helped because the deadline was moved. But if it was not for that, then maybe I would not have had the opportunity to come for this uh, particular year, for the beginning of the year of September. So I would advise that make sure you get all your documents ready. You look through the website, you make sure you mark down all the deadlines and then all the documents that you're required to submit. And then you can start making your application in time. Thank you for watching. I hope you've learned more about spatial engineering. If you have any questions left, please join us in our chat session.